Hey guys, how's it going? Michael Troy here. Today we're looking at Namor the Submariner number 24. Namor versus Wolverine by John Byrne. Enough said, right? However, the more to say is that Doctor Strange and Iron Fist are also in here, so there is plenty of reasons to stick around. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Hit that like button. Let's get right into it. Huge John Byrne fan, in case you're a watch my channel, you already know that. Love his art, living legend, so great. Uh, one of the most prolific comic book cartoonists ever, especially, you know, coming out of the big two. X-Men, She-Hulk, Fantastic Four, John Byrne's Next Men, um, She-Hulk, so many great things. OMAC, love all his stuff. I loved his run on Namor. I thought it was interesting. First of all, great title. I don't know who involved that. I want to see, it feels definitely like Kevin Nolan could have, but don't quote me on that, obviously. Anyway, Mar Marvel's first and Mightiest Mutant, I thought it was interesting that, um, you know, John Byrne is always looking for a different angle. I feel like when he takes over a book, and he's also kind of the fixer, so he's looking to, like, fix or sort of, like, streamline certain aspects of characters or storylines. And um, I don't know if he's the one who pointed it out or whatever. Like, technically, Namor was, like, a mutant. So they wanted to tout him as the first mutant. On one hand, I think it's, like, trying to capitalize on the popularity of mutants and the X-Men at the time. And also John Byrne's connection to them. And not, not that he would ever be so petty, but in a way, is it him trolling Chris Claremont? Perhaps, and I think he might have said mu as much if I remember correctly, but I remember a lot of things incorrectly. So anyway, here we go. What a great cover. Wolverine versus Submariner. Beautiful art. John Byrne. I love the close-ups of the faces. It's like such a, like, you know, a superhero showdown. Uh, so John Byrne is definitely lettering his own stuff at the time. Computer lettering based on, I forgot which font. Sorry, Matt Haas, I know you're, if you're watching, you told me once before, but I don't remember. Jack Abel. Anyway, the man called Doctor Strange. Great to see Doctor Strange here. John Byrne had said at one point that he kind of regretted not doing Doctor Strange. He was offered it at one point and turned it down because he didn't feel like it was a good fit for him. And a lot of stuff, I don't know, he's done maybe post that or whatever, I feel like he's the perfect fit for Doctor Strange. I would have loved to have seen like a Burn Austin Doctor Strange. I think it would have fit in perfectly with like the Michael Golden Austin Doctor Strange, the Ter uh, the Paul Smith, Terry Austin Doctor Strange, so many good ones. I always kind of love, uh, w w like it, it reminds me of a little bit uh, when John Byrne did Wonder Woman and is this post-1992? I think this is... I don't know. Gosh, you guys. I don't know. I'm so bad with dates. Anyway. Um, I, th I think this is post-Wonder Woman. But anyway, like in Wonder Woman, he did so many guest stars from the DC Universe. And like did all his Jack Kirby characters. And I kind of love when he just like introduces other characters. Like you have this like great stable of characters to play with. Why not? Right? And what a great Doctor Strange. I mean, I have to point out, I forgot to point out, I love the Sanctum Sanctorum. Um, it's only there if you know it's there. I mean, come on, everybody knows this stuff, but like that window is just so awesome. I love this. I mean, Iron Fist, you know, arguably one of the characters that helped launch Burns' career. I love his Iron Fist. That looks so cool. I remember... Gosh, it's, my brother's like a long time Power Man and Iron Fist fan, and I'm pretty sure he collected Iron Fist. And so I feel like I, I was exposed to Burn before I even knew it was Burn via that and probably Marvel Team Up. Um, but it's not too late, Burn. So Burn just had a cataract surgery. He's working on like X Men Else One fan fiction, and um, apparently he's in a slump and needs motivation to work again. So I say, hey, do your Doctor Strange story. Finish the last Galactus story. Do She-Hulk. Do something. I mean, but, you know, he's 72 years old. If he wants to take a freaking break from drawing, let him. 
However, the ability is just like so still there. I think he'll come out of a slump. Like all artists have slumps. So, you know, it's only a matter of time. The call of the pencil. Did I just coin that phrase? I highly doubt it. Nothing's original anymore, guys. Every time I think I have an original idea, I Google it. And there it is. Frickin' Google. Look at this. So I find it interesting that um, Byrne always had these sort of... <clears throat> uh, you know, I feel like he, you know, he obviously has loved Wolverine so much. And I think, like... Uh, you know, like Wolverine popped up in the pages of Alpha Flight, and rightfully so. I mean, he, he, he is so tied to the origin of Alpha Flight, and Alpha Flight is so tied to his origin that how could he not? But um, I kind of just love, like in that storyline, this Wolverine shows up and like he's being mind controlled, I guess, by this plan or whatever, I don't know. But, um, you know, so he's kind of using the character visually without any other like sort of story aspects that would alter like because I'm sure this is a point where Wolverine had a solo book and was probably in you know at least one different X-Men book um I am stop dead in my tracks hold on one second but um what was I even saying oh yeah so it, I just think it's a fun way to use Wolverine Almost like using him without really using him. I know that sounds weird to say it that way. Anyway, this Dinah, what is up with this? Like, I feel like I don't remember this at all. The Defenders of Dinatron City eBay, here I come because this looks like amazing. If the interiors, anything like the cover, which I'm sure it's not, I need to find this because that is freaking beautiful. Did that ever really happen? Defenders of Dinatron City, mental note. Um, Byrne was also doing a lot of stuff like this with, like, the, the panel layouts. I don't know. Like, there's definitely, like, and there should be a timeline. Maybe that's a task for someone else. I don't, I feel like I'm too lazy to do something like that. But, like, the evolution of Byrne's art, where he starts implementing different things, and sort of, like, the different levels of his inking, you know, um... He's doing more traditional inks at this point. Like, he had been using the duo shade. And I have to say, I love the duo shade. Like, Byrne definitely did an amazing job with the duo shade. Most notably on um, Omac and Namor. I feel like he did, like, a couple of issues of She-Hulk. But I don't know. I, I felt like it was so um, specific to Omac and Namor that I'm not sure how I felt about it on She-Hulk. But it's just kind of interesting to note, like the, uh, like I said, the evolution of uh, Burns' art. Love him using like classic old school sort of alternating currents. Also, I always love like the art for the letters page. If you're the owner of letters page art, original art, I'm jealous of you. Anyway, another fun John Byrne issue. Namor versus Wolverine. John Byrne cannot stay away from Wolverine. And that is just fine with me. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Hit that like button and I will bring you more soon.